Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy, US Stock Financial Statements for Beginners. In our previous two sessions, we've learned how to use financial statements to select the highest quality leading stocks. But many of us still run into problems in practice. Suppose you're very optimistic about a stock, you've done detailed research on the financial statements and the company's business model. The financial data is good and there's no reputational risk in the short term. But the stock price just keeps falling. Or take another example. A company's financial statements and the stock fundamentals are impeccable. The stock price is high, however, and you're afraid to buy it. And although the stock just keeps going up, you're afraid to bet on that. Remaining the case, so a chance is lost. In this class, I'll help you solve these problems. To begin with, trading a stock is just like buying a product. The first thing you need to know is, how much is it? A lot of people measure the value of a stock by its price. If the price is low, that means the stock is cheap. If the price is high, the stock is expensive. But is this really the case? In our daily lives, we usually use price to determine whether a product is cheap or expensive. But this kind of thinking can't be applied to investment. Let's take a look at the first example. If the company's fundamentals are good, then stock prices plummeting is most likely because they have risen too much recently. If stocks have been overvalued, investors will be seeking to dump them. So, what about the second example? When a company's stock price keeps rallying, you've been measuring a company's value by looking at the price of its stock. But the price of a stock doesn't really determine a company's true value. To understand how to value a company, you'd need to understand how valuation works. These two examples point to a key missing element when you invest in stocks, valuation. Now, I'll explain valuation using three important metrics, price to earning ratio, price to book ratio, and price to sales ratio. Buy a wonderful company at a fair price is the crucial investment principle that Warren Buffett follows when buying stock. There are two key elements to this principle, a good company, a good price. We've talked about how to decide on a good company earlier in the course. So what about a good price? This is where valuation comes into play. There are three valuation metrics, price to earning ratio, price to book ratio, and price to sales ratio. The PE formula, PE equals total price divided by earning per share equals stock price multiple by company total cap divided by earning per share multiple by company total cap equals company total market capitalization divided by company net profit. So, what does the P-E ratio actually mean? I'll share an example with you. Jack had opened a restaurant beside the school, but with families being encouraged to have a third child, Jack was concerned that heavy cooking films in the restaurant would interfere with fertility, so they decided to sell up. The restaurant was in a good location and business was going well. Annual net profits were approaching 200,000 US dollars. Jack thought about this. With these net profits and in this kind of location, if he only asked for $200,000 for the place, he'd be losing out. So he asked for $1 million for the transfer of the business. The next day, Rose saw the transfer notice and made an appointment with Jack to talk further. Having revealed all the inventory streams, Rose decided to take the plunge. So for Rose, PE equals 1 million divided by 200,000. This works out to a PE of 5 times, which means assuming the restaurant's market value and net profits remain constant, it would take Rose 5 years to break even. PE tells us how many years it would take to recoup invested capital. The quicker that happens, the better. So usually, a low PE ratio can be seen as a good sign. The PB formula. PB equals share price divided by net assets per share equals share price multiple by company total cap divided by net asset per share multiple by company total cap equals company total market capitalization divided by company net assets. Let's look at another example to help us understand this concept. Rose was contracted to run a restaurant beside a school, but business had been good. 
as a good citizen, she has actively responded to the call to have another child. But milk powder is getting expensive, and there are tuition fees to pay for the other two kids. Rose needs money quickly. She wants to sell her profitable restaurant. Because she's in urgent need of funds, she decides to sell it at cost. This means a price tag of 1 million US dollars for the entire restaurant. Jack gets in touch with Rose as soon as he sees the notice of sale, when he values the various tables, chair, and kitchen equipment in the restaurant. He finds that they alone amount to 1 million dollars. Even if the restaurant doesn't do any more business, he won't lose money by selling them. Jack thinks this is a pretty good deal, so he pays the price tag and takes on the contract. So for Jack at this point, PB equals 1 million divided by 1 million. This works out to be a PB of 1, which is equivalent to Jack buying the store at cost. This example shows us that PB is about how much it costs you to buy an asset. If the asset itself is worth more than what you paid for it, then you bought it at a discount and got yourself a bargain. If the asset is worth less than what you paid for it, then you got it at a premium, over and above the market price. But is it worth it? That all depends on how much the asset will return to you in the future. Of course, when you buy an asset, the lower the cost, the better. So, generally speaking, a low PB ratio means the company is relatively undervalued. Finally, let's look at PS. Now that we've learned PE and PB, the price to sales ratio will be very easy to understand. The PS formula. PS equals share price divided by sales per share equals total market capitalization divided by total revenue. We can see from the formula that the greater the total revenue, the lower the PS ratio will be. So, generally speaking, the lower the PS ratio, the greater the investment value of the company's stock. Among the various tools of valuation analysis, the PS ratio is one of the most frequently used metrics. For mature enterprises, PE and PB are normally used for valuation. On the other hand, PS is more reliable for high-growth enterprises that haven't yet seen profits. The PS ratio will not be negative. For loss-making or insolvent enterprises, there is a meaningful value multiplier. At the same time, the PS ratio is relatively stable, reliable, and resistant to manipulation. Once you've learned these three metrics, open the Tiger Trade app, enter a stock name or a stock ticker, and click Analysis. Then you will see valuation data and graphs for that stock. Take Alibaba, for example. In the Valuation Analysis section, select PE and the time period 5 years. This will show us Alibaba's trailing 12-month price and earnings ratio over the last 5 years. The blue line chart below presents the PE. In the chart, the lower the alternate value, the lower the PE. Buying Alibaba shares at these times is relatively cost-effective. You can see the PB and PS data on the chart in the same way. It's foolproof. Here's an extra little tidbit. PE ratio can be further subdivided into static PE, dynamic PE, and trailing 12-month PE. These values are different because they have different value on the denominator. Company net profit. The denominator of static PE is the total net profit for the previous year. The denominator of dynamic PE is the total net profit for the previous four quarters. The denominator for trailing 12-month PE is the net profit for the entirety of the current year. PE TTM is the most common PE ratio in the market. You will find these data types regularly in any stock software. We don't need to study them in depth. It's enough to grasp the general idea. That's it for today's session. Let's make a brief summary. We know that three measures can be used to value a company. Price to earning ratio, price to book ratio, and price to sales ratio. One more thing, these valuation methods are the most common and basic methods on the market. There are many others. I hope over time, you can become familiar with them all. Now that you've mastered the concept of valuation, you will never need to use stock price to measure the value again. There's still a lot to learn about investment in stocks. Let's continue in the next session.